So something interesting happened today after hours on Microsoft. You can see here under the headlines feature, they have a about $29 billion bill that they basically have to pay uh, to the IRS. Uh, and this was unknown to investors and Microsoft alike. So we did see a little bit of a drawdown after hours here. As you can see, uh, the closing price was 332.45, but right now after hours, it's about 330.55. So not an insane drawdown, but two bucks in Microsoft, definitely a decent amount after it showed some strength earlier today. And what's the most interesting part about this is that we've seen a lot of call selling lately in terms of of premium. Uh, these two orders stand out. Uh, this first order over here was on October 6th. That was last week. And this one uh, was this week. It was October 10th. Uh, so both of these prints are relatively recent uh, for Microsoft. And you can see here 9.1 million in premium and 2.1 million in premium. That's a lot of premium. Super unusual, especially for a ticker like Microsoft to see orders like this. And what's even more unusual on top of that is both of these were calls but not the traditional call that you may think of uh, that bets on more upside. Uh, these were both at the bid, which likely means that they were sold. And in this case, they also were sold to open. Now, if you watched our last video, or at least last week on put writing, it's a very similar concept here. You can tell that this is call selling, at least selling to open, because the size of the contracts that were sold by this whale, as you can see here, a 2017 contracts and 9,107 contracts is greater than the existing open interest for Microsoft. So in this case, only 86 contracts are being held uh, going into today. That's what open interest means. And over here, you can see 2017 or sold, which means that the trader was selling these to open. That's the opposite of selling to close, which would mean that they're getting out of an existing position that they had on calls. In this case, they're trying to collect premium on these contracts. Uh, so the first thing you do when you see orders like this uh, that have a lot of premium behind them and you can identify that it is uh, being sold to open is I like to look at the strike and the spot price because the strike's gonna tell us where they want a price to close below uh, by the expiration, in this case, October 27th. Generally speaking, of course, you could also trade uh, this setup, but considering it has a relatively close expiration, they'd like to see price stay capped, in this case, below 327.5, and over here for this even larger order, below 325 by October 27th. The reason being is that when you sell to open contracts, your goal is to collect uh, this premium over here under the price category on Cheddar Flow. You wanna collect this premium and the way to do that is by having these contracts expire worthless, uh, which would require them to close below both 325 as well as 327.5 in this case, by October 27th. As you can see here, we are above both of those prints. I have a rough estimate over here of where these prints took place, roughly about 324 and 328 mid. Uh, so we are above both of these. So both of these whales at the moment are down on their position. However, this is a perfect example of why I like to merge both my own technical analysis skills with order flow, because personally, when I saw both these orders, I didn't take a trade setup just because we saw both a highly unusual order in an unusual order. And that's something I want you guys to understand. Just because you see an order with a ton of premium in this case, and also both of these were highlighted too on Cheddar Flow, doesn't mean that it's a layup and it has to be profitable overall. What I like to do is use this as a scan feature for potential setups. So we know right here, these are both very unusual prints. It doesn't mean that I have to take a trade based on it, but that means maybe I add it to my watch list, see where price goes, and if I find a good setup just based on the technicals, then I can take that trade. So in this case, the reason I'm bringing this to your attention today is I didn't see a good setup down here around 324.20. I didn't see a good setup over here around 328, but right now there's a potential setup, especially considering we saw this news after hours, there could be some more selling, plus there's CPI tomorrow, uh, so who knows what that will bring. But I finally see a viable trade setup, and that trade setup here is a potential breakdown of this trend line. If we receive a breakdown of this trend line, and I'll show you where I got this trend line, it goes all the way back to the high that we made as of this year. You can see it goes across. Uh, so we have a clear downward trend. This is what it means. That price stayed below here until as of recent, it's attempting to break out. Uh, so this trend line, if we go down, and by the way, I'm also on the hourly chart, which is going to play a part here. If we can break below this in the near term future, especially with the weight of this headline, then there's a potential trade entry. If we have an hourly close 
below roughly 328, meaning that we're back below this downward trend line, then I can add a put position or I could also sell calls myself. There is a caveat to that though. If you are selling calls to open, especially if you're not covered, you can theoretically lose an infinite amount on those. So you do need to understand your risks with entering. But in this case, I can also add puts because I know that there's a whale out there that wants this to close below 325 by October 27th. Does that mean it has to happen? No, but at the moment, we haven't seen them close this position yet. So as far as we know, they still are betting on downside and buy about five bucks too, because right now it's roughly at 330. So if we did break below on the hourly, below this downward trend line again, that would one mean that today would be a fake breakout. If you guys watch this channel, you know I love to trade a fake breakout setups because they end up being very bearish overall. Basically means that bulls were unable to support the breakout to the upside. Uh, so that can lead to a lot more sell pressure afterwards. So if we got that, that'd be the first thing. But then two, it also provides amazing risk reward. And the reason why is if we do have an hourly close below roughly 328, back below this trend line, then I can cut for a loss if need be, if we have a break back above. So risk in this case is only about a buck at most because back above would be roughly around 329 mid when potential reward can be about three bucks or even more because remember that target would be roughly 325 in this case if the whale ends up being right and we are able to close below 325 by October 27th. So a risk reward is a nice one to three in this case. I personally like to look for one to three, one to four, one to five a setups. That's kind of the sweet spot. It's pretty rare to see anything more than that, but if you can manage risk appropriately, which in this case, we have our risk established. If this theoretical setup presents itself, uh, then we can write it down. And also there's potential for more afterwards if it wants to fall. In this case, I would only take the puts. I wouldn't end up selling calls like these whales did here. Uh, that still is a viable option. But again, remember there are excess amounts of risk when you do sell calls or sell puts for that matter uh, that aren't covered. But this is a perfect example of why one, I waited because I didn't see an entry over here or at least a good setup and I didn't see a good setup over here. But now if we do get this breakdown back below, we have that fake breakout setup and that would be a very nice confluence with what the flow is showing us over here. So whenever you see these large orders, it doesn't have to mean enter it right away and copy what the whale is doing because there's so much premium behind it. Wait a second, let a setup come to you instead of trying to chase it. Check the criteria I listed uh, here in the video. For example, uh, the size of the contracts they were selling was above the open interest. So we know uh, this is a sold to open call order. Also, by the way, another way you can identify that similar to put selling is if the IV drops. So if you have, you can see the IV right here, uh, implied volatility. If the IV does drop on these orders, if there's a consistent amount of them, uh, like you see multiple sweep orders of the same contract, uh, then that also is a good sign that they are selling to open. So there's two ways you can identify uh, contracts that are sold to open. But if you look through the criteria I showed you in this video, uh, check your own chart, uh, see if there's a viable setup, then there's a potential trade entry for you and uh, you can go forward from there. So other than that, I'll keep it short and to the point today and I'll see you guys next time.